第三十七对演讲题目是 Number Five， 计时开始。My name is Emma. As the world is becoming more and more globalized and technology is rapidly developing, it is important for youngsters to be more competitive. But how? What can we do to stay at the top of our games? We should gain knowledge from a wide range of sources. Don't just turn on our phones and swipe Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. All day, we shouldn't just see the updates of people we follow every day, or watch a lot of people fighting about who is going to be the next president of Taiwan. We have to check out more international news and learn about what's happening to the world and neighboring countries. Next, let's welcome Catherine. Second, we can participate in international activities. In our school, teachers and students travel abroad to work as volunteers in rural areas. This is a very good way to enhance our international outlook. Third, we need to have excellent language skills. It is significant for us to improve our English ability. In addition, with great language skills, you might get the opportunity to travel abroad and broaden our horizons. Next, let's welcome Diana. Fourth, we need to learn to communicate and work with other people in order not to be replaced by artificial intelligence. In the future, less of jobs will be substituted by machines. Since machines can work for long hours, it is said that AI might be faster than people. Although AI has these advantages, we have something that AI does not have, that is our feelings. We can tell whether a person is sad, happy, or mad. So we should not be shy to talk to others. Or share our ideas with others. Learning how to communicate is not easy, since we sometimes say the wrong things. However, communication is definitely an essential skill for us. Next, let's welcome Rose. Last but not least, we should learn to be persevering. We shouldn't give up easily. Though we may feel stressed, we should keep on working hard, because a person's success is determined by her hard work, not her intelligence. In my experience, a good way to train our determination is to run a marathon. After running 10 kilometers, we may feel stressed, tired, and want to give up. But if we keep running at the same speed and don't give up, surprisingly. We won't feel pain and stress anymore. For instance, a good example is Helen Keller. She, when she was little, she cannot hear or even see, but she worked very hard. And in the future, she became a very successful woman. Sharpen our language skills and communication skills. Above all, perseverance is the key to achieving our goals. Thank you for listening. The sixth-six team presentation topic is Number Four: Time to Start. Judges, fellow opponent, 
and the most esteemed guest. Nowadays world is a changing world. Change is an undeniable thing around us. Broadcast company like CNN, BBC, they all focus on global issue. This means that global issue is a thing that everyone should pay attention on. Global issue is not a thing that happen between country and country, but there, global issue are things that will affect the entire globe. So today, our topic is number four. We'll be sharing four main global issues happening around the world, and we'll give, in, we'll give example to support our uh, we'll give ex ex example to support our sharing. The four global issue that we're going to talk about is first, the Amazon forest, second, the climate change and following by climate refugee. Third, the trade war happening between China and America. Lastly, we will be talking about global political corruption. And now we'll have Kelly who will be explaining Amazon forest for us. Kelly. One of the global issue in this world is the Amazon fire. I, the Amazon fire that damage the Amazon forest. The Amazon forest is very important and precious to us because it provides a diverse species to our earth. And also, it supplies the most amount of oxygen that we breathe in. A lot of people blaming the financiers, traders, and also the retailers for the Amazon fire because they damage the environment and also they they do not take the responsibility of it. The expert on rainforest researcher stated that the Amazon fire is facing, facing a biggest threat in the world, which is the glandinization. Therefore, the non-governmental organizations are actively solving the Amazon fires issues. Uh, they they launched a day called uh, Global Amazon Fire Actions. These actions can allow the protester go to the Brazil embassy to protest for their stance and also to raise the public awareness. This pressure the government to give the response. Also, call open to the businessmen to re take the responsibility. Now, we we'll invite Mimi to elaborate more on the global issue. According to the environmental issues, there are another very important, the, the, there are another significant issue that's highly related to Taiwan, which is the climate refugee. The four main countries which we have the diplomatic relationship with are located in the Pacific Ocean, such as Nauru, the um, Marshall Island, Palu, and Tuvalu. These four countries are facing the main issues about the sea rising, sea level arising day by day, and these the main problem that these countries are facing is to resettle their civilians because their country might soon be covered up by the seawater according to the researchers. As a country with diplomatic relation with them, Taiwan has the resp responsibility to help them and to resettle the refugees. The, our government might have to set up a law about settlement of the refugee, not only for the climate refugees, but also for the other issues, such as um, the asylum seekers with other purposes, other purposes, such as political refugees from other parts of the world. These refugees has, could also help with a mutual cooperation that they could join our industry and help on our industry development. And the other main issue to us is, um, that's welcome Tiffany to explain. 
Uh, lastly, we will talk about the war trade happening between China and America. This China-United States trade war is not only happening between Donald Trump and Xi Jinping. This is a global issue that will affect the entire, uh, all the countries around the world, including their financial and economics. For Taiwan, this is a very important thing because it, tell, it reminds us to build more allies between other countries, not only China and America. So, uh, I believe that the New South Bond policy is one of the response to this global issue. So, uh, now we'll have Crystal to make a conclusion. Thank you for your listening. Number five, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the brave new world where technology and globalization have changed the face of people's life like never before. Facebook, mobile payment, robots, drones. In the past decades, so many new technologies have appeared that it's impossible to list them all. Ready or not, a new world is here to stay and is leading us into an unimaginable future. It's sink or swim of this tidal wave of globalization and technological development approaches. What are the survival skills which gives us a competitive age to ride on the wave? We'll make cross-cultural ability our first building block. Technology has made cross-cultural interaction a very common experience to individuals. Social networks have brought people from different cultures together in a digital global village. Meaning, what do we need cross-cultural cooperation for? Thank you, Leah. As the business expands across the borders and the marketplace is global, you today need to get ready for a multicultural workplace. From this perspective, the ability to work with and communicate with people of diverse background is a survival skill. Yet, is that a long a golden ticket to future success? I'm afraid not. There is no one size fits all when it comes to a world of constant change driven by globalization and technology. Since a digital workplace and workforce are the way of the future, digital literacy is a next skill we will add to our list. As digital natives, people in our generation text, post, update, and share on a number of different tech gadgets. Technology has become a part of our everyday life However, digital literacy does not equal a digital lifestyle. It includes the capability to use digital technology, communication tools, or network to use and create information. Digital literacy is a must, and it's our second step to staying competitive. Good point, Mimi. Hard skills like digital literacy give youth an age and soft skills can future proof of career. Here, soft skills mean transferable skills that involve human qualities, such as communication, creativity, or critical thinking. We believe strengthening soft skills is one of the best investment we can make for our future. As they are the type of skills robots can't automate. These skills of heart are at the heart of future because they stand the test of time regardless of what job we will work at in the future. However, hard skills get you higher and soft skills get you fired. Ideally, the marriage of soft and hard skills will definitely put us ahead of competition. So let's go back to the questions. What other skills do young people need to learn in order to be more competitive. Let's hear what survival rules my partner will show us. This trend of globalization and technological advance does greatly 
ease our life. We are now living in a world where information is easily available at the touch of a button. But be aware, my peer, this convenience does come with a price. After all, the possibility of technology is unlimited, while human capacity is limited. Information overload can mean a waste of time searching through an ocean of information or suffering productivity. To survive it, this is when data literacy, an ability to evaluate and apply data in a critical way, comes into place. All in all, the world is changing its face faster than ever before. We have no ways of knowing what challenge will lie ahead next, unless we become a lifelong learner. Four of us all agree that nothing can stop us as long as we stay curious and keep our fingers on the paws of the world. We will ride on the wave to get wherever we want. Thank you. The third speech is the number one. Good morning. People used to stereotype Taiwan as a little and overcrowded island centered around agriculture and manufacturing industries. Yet, Taiwan is much more than that. Taiwan teams with an amazing array of traditional festivals, such as the Chinese New Year and the Mid-Autumn Festival. It is also endowed with a rich culture that includes the indigenous peoples of Taiwan that make up about 2.4% or about 800,000 of the population and who lived here in relative isolation until a large immigration of Han in the 17th century. Then, of course, there's the natural beauty of the island, which all the Portuguese when they first laid eyes upon our beautiful country. Now, let's dive straight in with Kenny, elaborating on a couple of the parties we throw every year. Thank you, Miles. When it comes to the traditional festivals, the Chinese New Year and the Mid-Autumn Festival are what Taiwanese treasure. Reunion is the spirit of these two holidays. Chinese New Year is when people do away with the old and welcome the new. It is regarded as the most significant Chinese holiday of the year. On Chinese New Year's Eve, families clean their houses and gather together for dinner called Gathering Around the Stove. Young family members receive red envelopes with cash inside, and as soon as the clock strikes midnight, firecrackers are set off to welcome the arrival of the new year. The Mid-Autumn Festival, also called the Moon Festival, is another important holiday, and is encapsulated in an aura of romance. In earlier days, the festival was held to show gratitude to the gods for a plentiful harvest. Typical activities include eating mooncakes and barbecuing, which symbolize unity and togetherness. Now, Dana will lead us down the road of some of Taiwan's enigmatic cultures. Thank you, Kenny. Mysterious customs and activities of the indigenous tribes give a unique dimension to Taiwan's culture. The tribes from the most northern branch of the Austronesian language group and ethnically belong to the Malay race. Though many are being assimilated, some of them still possess their own languages and traditions. Take the Amis, the biggest Aboriginal group, for example. The Amis are rooted in Hualien, in the east of Taiwan. The Harvest Festival is their largest ritual. It is held every year in July or August to celebrate the millet harvest. It was once limited to tribal participation, but now is open to the general public. The Amis invite people to come up and dance around a bonfire that blazes all night long. They also splash water on each other as a symbol of the removal of bad luck for the whole year. Here's Ethan 
to tell us just how pretty our island is. Thank you, Dana. Taiwan has an abundance of stunning natural scenery. Its geography varies from sandy beaches to misty mountains, which gives people an array of destinations to visit. Many people go to eastern Taiwan to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. On weekends, people go jogging or cycling along the trails surrounding Taraco Gorge, the most amazing and iconic attraction in Hualien. In southern Taiwan, Kanding is well known for its white beaches and spectacular coastline. In summer, the waves provide the optimum conditions for surfing. Erlanbi, the southernmost point of Taiwan, offers magnificent views of the Pacific Ocean to the east and Taiwan Straits to the west. Now, miles will quickly wrap it all up. Thank you, Yisen. It fills us with pride to declare that our country, Taiwan, is an island full of humanistic atmosphere and breathtaking views. Love for family and acceptance of different tribes make Taiwan a friendly home. Picturesque scenery make this friendly home appealing to Taiwanese as well as the world. Thank you. Number five, Honorable judges, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Globalization is a process of interaction and integration among different nations, driven by international trade. This kind of international integration has brought many opportunities to the world. Firstly, globalization gives rise to the spread of economy, social, and cultural activities across national boundaries, thus making the world more interconnected. Secondly, free trade between countries has increased. Therefore, goods are transported easier and faster. Thirdly, Globalization helps developing countries' economic growth, thus solving the poverty problems in their country. What's more, the world economy will be strengthened, providing more job opportunities and potential investment. In addition to its great influence on the world, globalization also provides some opportunities for Taiwan. It's an island. Taiwan depends mainly on exports, which include many electronics and equipment, as well as metals, textiles, and plastics. Also, because of the cheap labor, many companies in Taiwan do their manufacturing in China. Therefore, we can say that globalization plays a vital role in Taiwan's transformation from an agricultural country many years ago to an economic powerhouse nowadays. However, it is not true that all effects of globalization are positive. Globalization has also brought up new challenges, such as environmental worsening, unsteadiness in commercial and financial markets, increased unfairness across and within nations, and the overuse and abuse of natural resources. Although many countries do benefit from globalization, many nations still lag behind. For example, in the past two decades, China and India have grown faster than the other already rich nations. Nevertheless, countries like Africa still have the highest poverty rates. Taiwan also faces some challenges. Firstly, many Taiwanese companies move to other countries for cheaper labor costs, and this causes the increasing unemployment rate in Taiwan. Secondly, due to globalization, Taiwan has permitted the import of cheaper farming products, thus hurting local farmers. Thirdly, the prevalence of global dominant cultures tends to overshadow our traditional culture, causing great challenges for our culture. 
So, we can see that globalization is everywhere and has changed our life a lot. But, how can Taiwanese youth stay competitive amid this wave of globalization? First, we need to be proficient in at least one skill. Since globalization brings about the increase in job specialization. Second, we need to develop global mobility because international cooperation is on the rise and we might need to work around the world in the future. Third, we must be equipped with international view and a concept of global village. Also, we might need to learn more than one foreign language because only when we are able to communicate with foreigners can we be competitive in face of the global village. Finally, do not be afraid to take any challenge. Go overseas and explore the whole world. Thank you. Number one, Number one, Taiwan, previously known as Formosa, or more commonly known as the Republic of China in the International Stadium, is a small subtropical nation located in East Asia. Its outline is similar to that of a sweet potato. Throughout history, Taiwan has been given many different names. And while the nation is not internationally recognized in the world, Taiwan suffers no identity crisis of its own. It stands resilient and thriving despite a tumultuous colonial history. Narendra Modi once said that the small countries of the world are as important as the big nations, and Taiwan is no exception. Ladies, gentlemen, honorable judges, and fellow diplomats, people of Taiwan are fiercely proud to call Taiwan their home. And it's no surprise why that is. People here have a heart of gold and are all very welcoming. It would not be an exaggeration to say that the Taiwanese people are one of the friendliest people in the world. Everyone is warm-hearted and willing to help those in need, and even those who aren't in need. Taiwan is truly a tourist stream, and it's no wonder so many foreigners have made it their home. From the north to the south, in the heart of every Taiwanese person lies a hospitable soul. Traditional values of filial piety, repayment, respect, and sacrifice are very much still valued in today's modern society. Although people here take their heritage seriously, Taiwanese people are also accepting of different cultures and belief systems. Undeniably, it is impossible to talk about Taiwan without mentioning street food. The night markets in Taiwan are always lined with stoves with the smell of mouth-watering trees wafting through the air. I'm certain you already know many of famous Taiwanese delicacies. Beef noodle soup, pineapple cake, and the infamous stinky tofu. It is not uncommon to see stores and shops that have been open for a long time, having been passed down from generation to generation. It is not uncommon to hear people talking about the latest food craft and see people lined up outside even before the opening hours. Food here is not for sustenance. Food is life. Food encapsulates culture, tradition, and bring people together. As a subtropical nation, Taiwan has many different types of fruits and vegetables to offer. And of course, who can forget bubble tea, the addictive drink that has taken the world by storm. Taiwan's innovative approach to techn technological development is unparalleled. Taiwan doesn't just make technological part for other companies, but with brands like Acer, ASUS, and HTC, Taiwan is also at the forefront of advanced technology and electronic gadget. And who hasn't heard of Gogoro's electric scooter yet? Gogoro is an electric scooter company that's at the forefront of the electric scooter industry and revolutionizing eco-friendly transportation. It is hard to believe that such a small country has such a diverse variety of achievements. It is no wonder that so many university students choose Taiwan for their choice of internship. Just visit Science Park and ask around. Furthermore, just a quick Google search will show you how convenient it is to get around with the abundant modes of transportation, such as the conventional rail, rapid transit systems, and high-speed rail. 
If technological advancements don't arouse your interest, then the beautiful ecological scenery will. The large mountainous ranges that run up the country are a sight to see, many of which are photographer's dream. Places like Toko Park, Arishan, Yushan are wondrous highlands that even the locals are always visiting. More importantly, nature in Taiwan is very accessible, with numerous ways to get to and fro. It is no coincidence that the Portuguese sailor named Taiwan Ia Formosa, meaning beautiful island. Taiwan strives to maintain student beauty with a fantastic waste reduction system that has achieved one of the highest rates of recycling in the world, and what other country has filled at least as their garbage trucks are. What we lack in size, we make up for it with the size of our hearts, our tradition, and our values. Whether you come to Taiwan for the multitude of delicacies, the breathtaking scenery, or even to just witness day-to-day -day life here, you will surely find amazement and awe in every corner. Taiwan is truly a unique experience that cannot be missed. It's full of culture, history, and exotic treasures that one couldn't possibly experience all in one lifetime. Come to Taiwan and experience it for yourself. You won't be disappointed. Thank you. Number two, Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A few weeks ago, I was watching the movie Doctor Strange, a weird place to get inspiration for a speech like this. But the scenes in Nepal featured gorgeous historical ruins and stunning colored flags dancing in wind really shocked me. It made me want to discover more about Nepal. Suddenly, I realized that Nepal was also one of our new self-found policy partner countries. Thus, I arranged a peace trip. The word P-E-A-C-E -E would serve as our guide to explore Nepal's religions, lifestyles, and customs. Queen, can you explain more? Sure, Shayna. The P of peace trip stood for piety, since Nepal's people take their religions very seriously indeed. The first spot we hit was Swayambhunath, also called the Monkey Temple in Kathmandu. On the top of this Buddhist temple, we could see Nepal's people worshipping silently. The must-do event there was to attend a special blessing ceremony, to sprinkle water on your body and to put flowers on your head. After soaking up the Nepalese Buddhism, we decided to explore their Hinduism practices on our second day. A cremation ceremony in Pasupatina Temple sounded scary, but it really impressed us with its solemn Hindu tradition. This two-day trip gave us a deeper understanding of Nepal's inclusive religions, which coexist harmoniously in this peaceful country just like in Taiwan. Later, Nepal's intercity buses led us to our next peace trip destination. Mandy, go ahead. Here we go. Because we are Taiwanese, and we love food more than just about everything, the E and the A of our peace team stood for eating and affection. After leaving Kathmandu, we investigated two of the most important parts of life, food, and love Nepal style in Bukhara. The greatest way to sample Nepal snacks is to ramble in the old bazaars. Delicacies such as samosas, Nepal's curry dumplings were amazing. We had to eat with our right hands, assist the Nepalese tradition. As for the affection part, we attended a local wedding on the center island of Lake Bewa in Bukhara on the fifth day of our trip. During those days, Nepal's warm hospitality and excellent food was on display everywhere we looked. It reminded us so much of our home in Taiwan, and it helped to create a bond between us and the Nepalese people. Now, it's Gary's turn to tell us how he enjoyed the rest of our trip. Gary, are you ready? Sure, Mandy. During the remaining days, we headed back to Kathmandu 
and experience the final C and E of our peace tour, comfort and equilibrium. On the sixth day, after walking for many kilometers, we were in need of some relief. The Nepal singing ball was a nice comfort for us. We were treated with a vibrating metal ball placed where our inner stress was located, according to the locals. The vibration frequency put us to sleep before long and ended up removing our emotional and physical stress. We were left with balanced and calm minds afterward. On the last day, we took part in a local ceremony, a decent way to end our trip. In November, the country holds a nationwide festival called the Swansea, which provided us with our inner E equilibrium. To sum up, the two events mentioned above both offered us relief from our fast-paced lives and allowed us to experience calmness as our trip ended. Jaina, what's our conclusion? Thank you, teammates. Our peace trip to Nepal consisted of piety, eating, affection, comfort, and equilibrium. The Nepalese people's piety and affection taught us about their big, tolerant hearts and their unique eating habits has widened our views. Plus, the comfort and equilibrium they shared with us let us get rid of our daily pressures. Forget everything that you think you know, a character had said in a Doctor Strange movie. We did that, and it opened our eyes to a whole new way of thinking. Nepal is an amazing country, filled with fantastic people, and above all, peace. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your kind attention. Number five, Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is a light year era when technology changes in the blink of an eye. Accompanied by the revolution in transportation, the development of information and communication technologies, young people are born as citizens of a global village. Globalization contributes to the intensive of communication which leads young people to frequently confront the impact of new and diverse ideas. In addition, the rapid development of technology arises human desire to pursue a more meaningful life. The world is constantly changing. How can young people, the new generation, be equipped with the ability and become more competitive? The answer is simple. Flexibility, curiosity, creativity, and perspective. And now, let's welcome Catherine. Thank you, Sophie. First of all, staying flexible. Young people's minds are like a sponge, absorbing any and all ideas they come in contact with. So, many possibilities exist in this age to engage in meaningful dialogue with so many different people. While English is often the medium for communication, Language learning remains crucial. Languages carry all the elements of culture and are the key to open the gates of the world. By learning new languages, ideas can express in ways that resonate with people from different backgrounds as exchange which may mutually develop world views. Second of all, the rapid changing society also causes lots of modern problems such as high-tech crime and alienated relationships. As more life is experienced, Awakening the problems around us, combining what we have to solve it. Especially taking advantage of our curiosity to spark more creativity is more important than ever. That's why our technology is kept progressing. Besides breaking through the ordeal we face, continuous learning is also the way to keep pace with the world. Regardless of the vicissitudes of the environment, Integrating knowledge and creativity to conform to the trends of the times is not just needed, but necessary. And now, let's welcome Joyce. Thank you, Catherine. And through all this, the work of human nature cannot be lost. And it will be if people are not given the opportunity to develop them. As the saying goes, if you only read 
what everyone reads. You can only think everyone thinks. Thinking in a different way from everyone else around will set the new generation apart. Teach Liu Anting voluntarily taught in various countries and environments. She witnessed the uneven distribution of educational resources. Inspired by Teach for America, she founded Teach for Taiwan, which aims to improve the inequality of education in remote schools in the mountainous areas in Taiwan. She advocated educating children with passion, not just through books. Through Liu Anting's subtle observation and experience, she abandoned her original work in the U.S., returning to Taiwan to do something different from others. And now, let's welcome Stylish. Thank you, Joyce. Artificial intelligence technology has risen, which replaces humankind in many fields, such as taking care of children and the elderly. Though technology connects people and improves our living standard in many ways, why don't we attend to others in person? In our fast-paced life, we should go slowly from time to time and walk out of the ivory tower to taste life. By doing this, we can not only gain perspective, but also become more apathetic towards others. No matter how successful a young person may or may not be, they will surely fail if they forget what makes them human. Technology brings us closer together, but perspective doesn't allow us to forget our humanity. As Liu Wanping said, artificial intelligence is incapable of being substituted for human emotion. Besides cultivating our own abilities in this competitive society, we should remember to encourage those feeling depressed and take part in social issues passionately. That's what makes the new generation unique. Thank you. Number three, Good morning, honorable judges. As Premier Su Zhen Chang stated in May 2019, there are four main links connecting Taiwan and our new southbound policy partner countries. They are economic and trade cooperation, talent exchange, resource sharing, and regional link. The four links have created a solid model efficiently benefited Taiwan and 18 countries in Southern Asia in the aspects of medical, agriculture, tourism, technology, and culture. According to the report of the Executive Yuan in May 2019, the trade and investments between Taiwan and the new southbound policy partner countries is booming. The total trade profit with these countries in 2018 was 117 billion US dollars, with an increase of 22% more than 2016. In addition, these partner countries also invested 390 million US dollars in Taiwan in 2018, with an increase of 66% over 2016. What a significant achievement! Next, Bonnie will tell you more details. Thank you, Roy. Can you imagine that? Nearly in 2018, Taiwan had 37 construction projects underway in our new southbound policy partner countries, including power plants, petrochemicals, smart transportation ETC, metropolitan MRT, environmental production projects, and so on. The total amount of these projects reached 27 billion NT dollars in 2018. For example, top built solar power plants in Thailand and the Philippines, constructed metropolitan MRT in Malaysia, and proceeded environmental resources projects in Vietnam. Moreover, the Taiwan Economic and Trade Network has served nearly 25,000 Taiwan manufacturers assisting them to sell more than 270,000 items on the e-commerce platform in our new Southbound Policy partner countries. Next, Leo will give you more information. Thank you, Bonnie. 
As for tourism, the number of tourists coming from our new southbound policy partner countries has increased from 910,000 in 2016 to 1.4 million in 2018, an increase of 60%. Also, Taiwan is striving to educate the talents from these partner countries. In 2018, over 50,000 students came to Taiwan to study abroad, with an annual increase of 25%. We believe that when these talents go back to their countries, they will become very strong promoters to enhance the relationship between their countries and Taiwan. On the other hand, the number of the patients coming from our new southbound policy partner countries has reached 150,000 in 2018, accounting for 38% of all international medical patients. Compared with the number of 100,000 in 2017, there is a sharp increase of 33%. The international medical care indeed contributes a lot to travel and tourism industries in Taiwan. Now, Quincy will share with you more proof. Thank you, Liao. Furthermore, it's exciting that in 2019, the Global Muslim Travel Index ranked Taiwan as the third best country for Moscow to travel because of all the efforts made by Taiwan and its people. All in all, since 2016, when our government launched the new southbound policy, we have signed 29 agreements with our new southbound policy partner countries covering trade, education, environmental protection, science and technology, educational training, medical and agricultural fields. It cannot be denied that while China is squeezing the slaves of Taiwan internationally, America is having a trade war with China. New southbound policy has become more and more vital to Taiwan. And Taiwan has also gained a lot in new southbound policy. Taiwan has become a more fundamental ally with these partner countries and continuing to work harder to enhance mutual benefit with these newly made neighbors. Wow. The 17th演讲题目是 Number 1,即时开始 Good morning. My country, Taiwan, is a semi-tropical island in Asia and one of the world's most exciting and rapidly changing rapidly changing region. Like many other countries in Asia, Taiwan is highly populate, is densely populated and highly developed. So now we will introduce you guys about our democratic achievements, international humanity concern, and Taiwanese cuisines. Taiwan is a beacon of democracy to Asia and the world. This was a congratulatory address written by the former U.S. President George W. Bush to the President-elect Ma ying in 2008. Based on, the Constitution, based on the Constitution, human rights and fairness of elections have been guaranteed on this island. For example, we have held six presidential elections, signifying that we, signifying that we have uh, Taiwan citizens are the, are the real masters of our country. Through free will, people can vote for the candidate that they consider qualified to lead the future of Taiwan. Most important of all, we have, we have. Most important of all, we thank you. My country, Taiwan, although it's just a small country, but what we got is like a big land. We got lots of different nature things like Arlington sun Sunrise or like Green Islands Hot Spring. Those things make me feel like I'm not living in a small island. It's like 
an enormous ground. Another thing that I'm very proud of my country is our humanitarian assistance. Over the past decades, Taiwan showed other countries that our health or our different technology will help them to build their house when a terrible disaster hit their countries. Of those examples, I'm very, I feel very proud of my country and we are becoming a spotlight in the entire world or the international community. Cuisines have always been the most characteristic of different cultures and in, and in Taiwan. Eating culture not only symbolizes our ways of living, but also represents some kinds of art. Our multicultural immigrants is exotic ingredients, just like we have rice noodle fall from Vietnam, satay from Malaysia, and fried breadstick and soybean milk from China. Moreover, our enthusiastic night market is the best date for our foreign friends. And for Taiwan, we, we have to take a glimpse to our Chinese, to our Taiwanese spirits and eating culture. Through our introduction, we believe you have totally understand our democratic achievements, our national humanity concern, and Taiwanese cuisines. Though we are not very recognized by the world, and maybe some of you may think about we are just an island from Thailand, but we're not. And now, we believe we can be recognized in the world in some days. And we sincerely hope that our foreign friends will appreciate our appreciate our, for the faith and marrow of our country, Taiwan. Thank you.